Leia Healthcare, looking after you always. Proud sponsors of Real Health with Carl Henry. Welcome to Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. Folks, it's getting into that time of the year, one of the hardest times to stay focused and to stay healthy. It's getting cold, windy, and pretty wet as well. Every now and again, we bring in a leading personal trainer from around the country. We pick their brains on tips and tools to stay healthy. And on today's episode, I'm delighted to be joined by Leanne Moore, personal trainer and gym owner of Go Gyms. Leanne, welcome to Real Health. How are you? Hello, how are you? Thank you for having me. It's great to have you on. First and foremost, how, how's life? Uh, a strange couple of months. How have you got through the last couple of months and how have you found it? Yeah, I mean, it's been, it's, been a, it's been a weird one, a strange one for everybody, but we've all been in the same boat. Um, and I think we've just been trying to adapt and change and um, stay positive as possible um, and, and just get through it. Um, yeah, so we, we obviously um, have had to close the businesses a couple of times this year. Um, and work through those times. Um, but yeah, we're just trying to put the best foot forward. Isn't that all any of us can do, Carol? <laughs> of course, big that's for sure. Before we get into your tips and tools, let's chat about fitness and how you got into fitness and how you got into the gym business. Where did it all come from? Where did the interest come from? Well, so it's a bit, I have a bit of a, a, a weird background in terms of this hasn't been my every day for my whole adult life. Um, I actually changed my entire career just before my 30th birthday um, and started right down at the bottom of the ladder just over six years ago. I'm giving you away my age now. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's been, it's re- it just kind of made sense. Um, I started my career after college um, in journalism and broadcast media. I worked in that field for about five years. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed it. But if I'm being very honest with you, I just couldn't make the ends meet um, all the time. And it caused me anxiety and stress. And those are two things that I don't believe any of us should have in our lives. So um, I met my now husband, uh, David, and he had owned a gym at the time. He was a trainer. He knew that I exercised every day. He said to me one day, I don't understand why you're not doing what you love. And I just went, ding, like a light bulb moment. And uh, I don't think it was even a few weeks and I was, I was already enrolled in a course and, um, and I, I was submerged in gym life anyway. It's what I did. I, did it, I, I exercised in some way, shape or form most days of the week. So um, it, it just made perfect sense for me to, to, to go ahead with that. And yeah, as I said, just a month before my um 30th birthday i qualified as a personal trainer and here we are six years later and i love my job i love it so it's fantastic it all worked out well in the end let's chat about that for a second i'm interested in that you know making those big life decisions is always a scary thing for people and i'm sure a lot of people listening in are having particularly at the moment they're reflecting on life uh they're reflecting on do they love what they do or not does it work for them or not and what's important to them how scary was it putting everything out, everything that you've worked, you had worked for at the time and say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make a de- decision. I'm going to change into something different. How scary was that? And how did you deal with it? I'm not going to lie to you. It was absolutely <laughs> terrifying. I was basically about to change everything I knew and everything I kind of worked towards um, for a number of years in one industry. And then basically put myself right down, we'll say, on the bottom of the ladder in another industry and try and work myself um try my work my way through that uh, so it wasn't a, it wasn't um it wasn't that i was like afraid to do it but i certainly was it i, I did think a little bit about it before I, I jumped in um but it just made sense it made sense to what my kind of morals for my life my goals for my life and like the happiness of my life it made sense for that um and it wasn't an easy road either i mean everything when you when you when you give up one job obviously you still have bills to pay um and then you're moving forward and the the unfortunate stresses that come with that but i was i was ready to put the work in i was so ready to change my day to day and to to do something that I knew would give me, you know, fulfillment. 
Okay. And I suppose over the last few months, everything's changed in terms of gyms and gym usage. Yeah. Uh, a big push to online content. And that's something you've been good at pretty much from the get-go in terms of your online stuff's always been really, really impressive. How do you find that? And how do you find the pressures of online? Um, it's so weird because um, I love doing the live workouts online. Um, they started kind of organically at the start of lockdown in March. I just just wanted to help people to move because we all know the benefits like I mean we can all say it over and over again but we all know and feel that feeling after a workout and I just wanted people to feel that because I said that's the littlest thing I can do to help them to you know maybe just bounce out of bed again today because it gets more difficult as you go through it and uh, so yeah it started quite organically but um, I've had a lot of uh, time on the stage in my past years so that was something else I did I did a lot of musical theater in the past um pantos all of that fun stuff and I just treat it like a stage it's just <laughs> it's just bad but like it gives me that lovely buzz that you can't replicate in any other way um and I just love interacting with people and um the messages you get afterwards just that people are you know they're feeling great now they're going about their day and I'm like yes that's what I was looking to do. So that that live online element has been has been fab and I really enjoy it. Um, I have to say, Carol, that I've been quite lucky and I touch wood every time I do mention this to any of my close family or friends. I don't really experience any of the, the negative side of online. Um, and I don't know why that is. Um, maybe I'm inviting it in now. But, um, <laughs> I don't put too much of my life out there. I, 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 put, I put little bits, um, but I don't put too much out there. Um, and I just try to be a positive influence um, and just to, if I'm having a bad day, I tend to maybe not share very much online because you know what, everybody has a bad day, but you don't, um, that's for me to deal with. And I want to just, if people are logging on and looking at my, um, my Instagram or my, my website or whatever it is, I want them to leave feeling a little bit brighter. So that's not to say I don't have bad days. I do bloody have them, and <laughs> we all do. Um, but um, I have my own little ways of dealing with that here at home. So yeah, for, for me, thank goodness that um, that hasn't had any impact. Thank goodness, and hopefully it will continue that way. Um, and I just, I just get to enjoy all the good points of it. And people do have bad days and they often fall off the wagon. So it's a good place to start in terms of tips and content. So from personal experience, what are your mechanisms for dealing with that in terms of staying healthy, in terms of staying positive, or maybe having a bad day and realizing it's okay to have a bad day and not feel quite so positive, but to get back on the wagon quite quickly. How do you do that? And what are your tips? Um, so I know this sounds um, uh, like it's, I should be knowing doing this for years, but I actually only very recently, as recently as March, started doing something in my everyday and Carl, it's changed my life. I basically inputted a morning routine. Now I say morning routine, but I'm going to say daily routine for people because you know, um, we don't have kids yet, hopefully in the future someday. Um, but we don't have kids at the minute. So I understand that, you know, people's days are different. They meet kids at home, there's animals at home, there's different jobs, we're at different shifts. And um, so this can input your evening, midday routine, whatever you would like. Um, but this little hour of self-care for me has done wonders. All it entails is I get out of bed, I make a cup, a cup of coffee, I sit down and read a book for 35, uh, 30 to 45 minutes, and then I do 15 minutes of yoga. And it, it has, if, I can't even say it enough, it changed my life, isn't even a, a wild enough statement for it. It's just made me more calm centered person and it's just that hour for me david my husband knows he doesn't come near me while i'm sitting in the reading chair um but it's just been my little savior my little sanity and um really just and really helped me through the most and it came about in the most difficult part that i think we've all lived in the past year um and yeah it's just been fantastic so setting that little bit of routine for yourself is my number one, um, my number one uh, tip or bit of advice, whether it's reading, yoga, a little bit of exercise, a little bit of meditation. I'm trying to dabble in the meditation at the minute, <laughs> trying to start with it. Um, you know, whatever, getting outdoors, whatever it is for you, uh, just setting that little bit of time in your morning, your evening, wherever you can, 
uh, and keeping that space for you. Um, if you can start that and just even try to do it for the next few weeks, days, whatever it is, and keep on pushing with that, I really think you'll feel the benefits of it too. Okay, so it's putting time for yourself aside. It's having a little bit of mindfulness time where you immerse yourself in a book or a piece of exercise or a something yeah. and putting yeah. yourself out of the day. What is your time? I mean, go so far as to put it in your diary and schedule it like you would any other appointment, but you have to stick to it. You cannot cancel on yourself. It has to be your daily thing for you. Um, and, I, and I read an amazing book um, recently called Atomic Habits. And Oh the, yeah, we're actually, we're chasing them for an interview for the podcast. Oh, he's yeah, so yeah. fantastic. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to hear that one. Um, the best bit of advice I read in that book was um, never miss two days in a row. And so if you don't get there, say on your Sunday, things got mad and you just had too much to do and you forgot about your little routine, your little time for you, let's aim for it for the next day. So um, I just loved that book. It was fantastic. So um, that's a top tip recommend for me. On Okay, a, so, okay. On so put, put, putting yourself first is crucial. In terms of food tips, what are you seeing with clients? What are you recommending with clients? Again, it's winter kind of almost a natural hibernation kicks in. People seem to want to eat that little bit more and eat certain different types of foods. What food tips have you got for people? Um, my food advice is always the same. Listen, I have tried everything in the book and my whole way up between my teens, 20s, uh, into my 30s. And then just finally came to the realization, and maybe it's old age, <laughs> <laughs> came to the realization that you just need to treat your body well. Um, I personally don't count calories and I don't um, track macros and things like that, but I do just try to make the best possible choices I can make every single day. And you know why that's good? Because it doesn't take anything off the table. Like I'll have a pizza at the weekend and I'll have chocolate nearly every single day. A little bit doesn't goes a long way. Um, but I also have fruit and vegetable juices every day. We have portions of veg with our dinner. We have salads for lunch. We have homemade soups. We all know the foods that are good for us. We just need to start making the choice, I think, that what goes in does good for the body and actually then if your goal is something along the lines of you know weight loss or shaping up or anything like that what goes in reflects on the outside then eventually that's what it does um so i'm not into numbers and my food is just too delicious for me to bring it down to a number but um <laughs> i am into feeling good and i know the foods that i take in are you know 90 percent of that work I think you're right. I think people do know generally what's healthy and what isn't healthy. Yeah. Uh, and that can often be complicated as a message so often in so many different ways. And as a brand, we'd be the same. But we, our clients don't count calories. They just eat normally and have the odd treats just like that. It's important. And I think that, you know, it's important to, to say to people, yeah, you probably do know what to eat. Just do it and, you know, control it. And what about tracking food and food diaries and stuff like that? I do, I do like a food diary. At the, you know, if you're starting out in fitness, I do think a food diary is quite good because sometimes we're just unaware of the, the little things that we might uh, reach for during the day um, and then not even think about in your all, uh, all over total for the day. So I do like a little food diary. I have been a fan of keeping one myself in the past. Um, but uh, in, terms of, in terms of numbers, macros and all that kind of stuff, I'm not great at that. I'm just, I've never been quite good at math. So that's probably where it comes from. Um, but I do think that writing things down, it kind of makes it, yes, oh yeah. And then you kind of realize, oh, maybe I did reach for a couple too many digestive biscuits today than I should have. Um, so that is a lovely tool to have. Um, but yeah, as far as the, the total figures comes down to, it's not my way, but I don't think it's, it's a wrong way. It's just not my way. Yeah, no, I, again, I think, I think you're at that whole idea of just, just tracking. So it's just writing it down. You can see the snacks. Again, you'll know if they're good or not. But once it, there's an accountability component in terms, of, uh, in terms of seeing it. In terms of exercise and staying exercising through the winter, what are the obvious go-tos? Uh, well, I will say go to the gym. Get nice and the outside. I would say that, wouldn't I? Um, it's, it's hard to get outdoors um, in, the, in the winter. The evenings are shorter. Um, I think... Uh, I think it's, I know it sounds so funny, but I always take up running at this time of year. I don't know what it is. Is it the refreshing coldness of the air? Is it the colors of autumn? I don't know. But if running is not your thing, I cannot tell you the strength of a walk with your 
dog. Like if you don't have a dog, go walking on your own. <laughs> the strength of just getting outdoors for a walk for your mental space and also obviously for your physical space. Um, if running is not your thing, um, that, would be, that would be a tool that any of us can, can take out the toolbox at any point. It's, it's such an easy one. Um, I was actually out walking uh, yesterday with the, with the dogs, haven't done it yet today, but um, the colors, the colors around at this time of year, it's just, it's just beautiful. Like there's, it's just a release for the mind as well as anything else. Um, but try things new as well. Like, I mean, if outdoors is not a, a thing, it's coming in now to those evenings where it could be absolutely lashing out and you're telling me to go for a walk, Leanne? No, <laughs> try something new. I mean, there's, there's when the gyms uh, reopen, there's classes in all your local gyms. Trying something new is probably the best tool I would advise anyone if they're kind of losing their 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 lust for wanting to work out again because it just reignites something back in you gives you a little spark do something you've never done before if you've done hit classes and spin classes before why do you not try a dance class give it a go see if you like it and now the the most amazing thing through all of this lockdown is that there is literally every type of class online so you don't even have to leave home if you don't want to you can just you know have a little workout space in your sitting room wherever it is for you and do it there and literally the possibilities are endless you can be doing Tai Chi to yoga to Zumba to hip hop in your sitting room. Um, and they're all there at literally the touch of a button now. So it's fantastic. And I think most people do the cardio stuff. Uh, certainly when we do corporate stuff, we look around the room or even on Zoom when we do on that way, people do lots of cardio. They tend to not do resistance-based training. So for anyone listening in who hasn't done resistance or is afraid of doing resistance, talk them through that in terms of why they should do it. We see this a lot. So in the gyms, we see um, a very, like, uh, just in general, I'm being general here. The, the gym floor is generally male dominated. And it's maybe because um, uh, females especially don't realize the benefits of resistance training. Um, especially if you're looking to strengthen the body, to feel like physically strong, to tone the body, to build some muscle on the body. When you say build muscle, I think a lot of people go, no, <laughs> I don't want to do that. Um, the, the gym floor is, is the place to do it with resistance training. Um, and it's so beneficial in every way. The one thing I always say as a gym owner is do not be afraid to walk up to the reception in your gym and ask to book some time with the trainer. That is what we're there for. We're just waiting for somebody to do that. Um, but it's such a simple thing, but I don't think people want to, or know, first of all, that you can do that. You can do that in absolutely any gym. You just walk up, you can ask them um, for some time with a trainer. In Go Gym, we call it a, an assessment, or we can book a, a, a PT session with one of our trainers. Um, and we offer that service for free all the time. So we can make sure that one, you're not afraid of using the gym that you are paying a membership to. And two, that, you know, you're learning something. And the, the idea is not to stay with you and hold your hand through every session, but to actually teach you to do it yourself. Um, and I think that's so important. And if you haven't yet dabbled in resistance training, I would urge you to give it a go because you're going to feel the burn like you've never felt it before. Um, but you'll also see the benefits. Give yourself four, six, eight weeks and you're going to never look back again. And of course, now there's been a huge growth in terms of online and people's comfort using online, even in terms of as a podcast, we record and have recorded online since March, <laughs> having never done it before and sworn that we wouldn't do it when actually it's turned out to be exactly the same as having somebody in studio. So online exercise gives people a really good broad selection classes that they can choose from, from every type of thing. But again, some resistance training through winter will make a big difference. So kind of look for a resistance kind of training class that you can do at home, whether you have equipment, whether you don't have equipment equipment there's loads of resistance that you can do at home and loads of classes to suit that yeah absolutely and if you if you do want to go down the route of continuing with online classes you're finding it fits into your day maybe put on your little christmas list 
a little bit of equipment there for uh, for your Christmas present because the, the, that kind of stuff, you know, they'll go through times where it'll gather dust in the corner and then you'll pick it up again. So that stuff never ages really. I mean, I have kettlebells and dumbbells in the shed there that are there for, you know, the most of like 10 years that I've had them. So they're always going to be able to be reused. It's a great present for anybody. And if somebody is into doing their home workouts, which are fantastic because, you know, it fits into their day. Um, I have um, moms getting in touch saying, you know, I don't have to get a babysitter because I'm just doing my workout at home and I'm getting the exercise in in the middle of the day when I want to do it because, you know, waiting for to, 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 to swap over the kids or something like that to go out to the gym in the evening is difficult. And I, you know, I have a lot of female clients, so I'm speaking for the females. Um, I have some male clients, but not too many, but um, it's, it's lovely. It's, it's a lovely part that's fitting into people's days and it's making them see how, how doable it is to have um, a fitness routine in your life now. So um, that's one amazing thing I think that's come out of the, the past few months um we have to search for the positives as best we can of course that is that is for sure and, and on that note in terms of positivity and kind of mental health and you know the issues around mental health now we know that people need to move for their mental health and any kind of movement is going to make a big difference to keep you positive and keep you optimistic yeah no absolutely and i've I've spoken about this in the past before. I've I struggled hugely with anxiety for many, many years. And my release for that was literally to put my earphones in and go for a run. Um, I wasn't uh, trying to run away from it. I was just dealing with what I was feeling as best I could. Um, and I cannot tell you the release that running gave me at that time. Um, and it was, it was just this lovely headspace just for me. Um, and I do think that self-care practices like, like exercise, but not, not limiting it to just exercise, many of the things we've spoken about already today, um, can really, really help you if you are feeling any of, um, any of those things that you, you don't necessarily want to be feeling. Uh, anxiety was something that ruled my life, like ruled my life. It was very overwhelming. It would be it would be so bad on some days that I would literally feel like I couldn't go outside the door and um, that it, it controls you. So I do empathize with anybody that is um, struggling with whether it's anxiety or any other uh, mental health issues, especially at this time. But we need to take the power back at that time and we need to start implant, implementing self-care practices into our everyday um, because at the end of the day, we can be our own heroes in this uh, scenario. We can, you know, put one foot in front of the other and start to feel more positive feelings. Um, and that's the only way to do it is to implement those little practices every single day. Um, so going back to the point that we said a while ago, take out your diary now, put in your next week um, of, of, of your time every single day, whether that is 30 minutes or whether it is 60 or 90, or if you're very lucky, two hours, two, three hours, <laughs> and put it in and keep that time for you because you are, you, if you don't look after you, nothing else can work after that. It starts with you, whether you have a family of 10 or whether you're a single person, uh, whatever it is, unless you look after you, nothing else can work after that. So um, we have to put this time in and it's self-care isn't a selfish thing. It's not like, oh, me time. It's a necessary thing. And especially with everything that's going on right now. Um, and I think more so than ever, it's so funny because as a trader, you start talking a lot about self-care as opposed to just exercise. And it's not the same thing, although they do go hand in hand. Um, but I do think it's such an important topic and I do think it's something that we can all make a start on. Even if you're feeling wonderful, it can still add even better benefits to your day. Fantastic. Yeah, and it's been great to have you on the show today. If people want to find out more about you, where can they find you? Um, you'll find me on Leanne More Fitness on Instagram or leanne.ie. Or you'll find me in Goji Limerick or Goji Mashburn when we get back open. <laughs> it's, been, it's been great to catch up finally, kids. And keep up the good work. And thank you so much for your time today and for your tips. Folks, I really hope you enjoyed today's episode of Real Health with Leanne Moore. 
Simple tips to keep you focused and healthy all throughout the winter and do exactly that. As ever, you know where we are. We're at Carl Henry PT on Twitter and on Instagram, realhealth at independent.ie. Don't forget to rate and review and we'll see you next week for more Real Health. Thanks, Emil, and have a great week. Leia Healthcare, looking after you always. Proud sponsors of Real Health with Carl Henry.